Hi, I'm Raja San. I'm a teacher, a writer, and an actor. Speak the speech, I pray you. Exploring, you want to hire me? Exploring human connection. I believe that we are a culture that is unfortunately plagued by fear and disconnection, and with the Raji Hassan show, that's this show, I want to ask how can we connect again to each other and to ourselves. This is the Raji Hassan show. You'll have to forgive me. I'm a little loopy. I'm tired. Today on the Raji Show, I'm bringing you part two of my conversation with Lucy Arnez. At the top of this conversation, I ask her if her parents, Lucille Ball and Desi Arnez of I Love Lucy and Desi Lu Studios, which is responsible for Mission Impossible and Star Trek, amongst many other things, I ask her if her parents were motivated by fame. She very quickly answers, no. We discover in this episode that Lucy and Desi, senior, were motivated by the love for their work. There's a fantastic lesson here for us millennials, or anybody really, trying to build anything. Asking ourselves, are we motivated by fame and significance, or are we motivated by love for the work? If I can speak honestly, I'm not always motivated by love for the work. That's the truth. I hope to always return to my true motivation, and this interview helped me do that. Lucy also expresses how the social media rules plaguing the millennial generation trying to build or accomplish anything are actually unfair. And it was so validating. It was so validating to hear this she's you know she's not elderly but like elder generation of the entertainment community say to me who's stressed out about view counts and likes and followers and subscribers and all of that black kick 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 it's so validating to hear lucy say that it's just not fair and so i hope that th- this piece of the conversation validates you as well so here's what I'm driving at. What are you driving at, Raji? <laughs> here's what I'm driving what at. What are you Lucy. driving at? I see a theme between your parents w- in, in their careers that it, it does not ever seem like they were motivated by fame. Yeah. <laughs> Such a quick answer. No. Motivated by fame and significance and numbers and all those kinds of things. They were motivated by the love for their work. Right. And it, yeah. like, it seems like Desi Lu, this, this studio that revolutionized television, your father didn't set out to create the studio to revolutionize a medium that he didn't know anything about. He needed money or he needed a company to produce a thing that CBS was like, well, we don't know if we're going to put up all of that money. Right. And he well, was like, they well, didn't even create Desi Lu until many years later. They just had their little Desi Lu production company. They had to name it something for taxes, but it wasn't until three or four years later where, People were saying, we love what you do with your show. Can we do that too? Can we use your cameraman? Can, can, can you sh- give us a cinematographer as good as your? How did you do that? So he started helping other people film shows and, and renting space. Yeah, well, we're working at Co- Coenga. Maybe you could get a stage. And pretty soon Desilu Productions was working three or four different uh, shows and they were doing pilots. And, you know, they were like a little mini production company, Desilu Productions. And so he said, you know, Lucy, if we're going to continue doing this, we're going to have to get bigger. Otherwise, we can't compete with those big mm. studios anymore. And um, so they thought about it and uh, RKO became, up, you know, went up for sale. And he decided it was better to sell the rights, his, his 50% of the rights to I Love Lucy, to get enough money to let Desilu Productions get bigger. So they could function the way they needed to. Otherwise, they should just quit because they can't compete. And that's what happened. It was because of that, not because, oh, I want to have a studio one day. But it became necessary to get to get larger and to to compete with the other studio. Mm. There's a fantastic lesson here for my generation, well, for any generation, really, I think. But I want to be arrogant to be like the generations about be like, listen here, you guys, when <laughs> at least for my generation. 
I'll speak for myself. I won't speak for everybody. I can only speak for myself really, right? Yeah. I am, I can be very motivated by the number of views something gets or the likes that I get on something. And when something doesn't hit a certain number, I feel awful about myself or I think, oh God, what happened? And why didn't I do that right? And I really thought I was putting my heart on the line and all those kinds of things. And when I get still with myself, and I listen to my heart, I can find my true motivation again. You know what I mean? But there is so much noise around millennials because of Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all of those things where yeah. we are so motivated by numbers as opposed to the desire to work, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's the lesson that we can take from the careers of Lucille Ball, Desi Arnaz. Well, it's unfortunate, Raji, that this culture, brilliant as it is, and all these wonderful new advances, we have these phones and these magnificent apps and GPS. And I mean, it's quite marvelous, you know, all the things we can do. But it's also changed an awful lot, not for the better, I don't think. And it's just what you got to live with, with all of that. I mean, suddenly now, what you just mentioned is how you judge whether someone is good or not and why there somebody created a thing called twitter or instagram or any of the other things and there's a like button and there's a follow button and now anybody anybody at all can become a influencer because they showed enough cute naked or you know semi-naked bikini pictures standing in front of something and Believe they get, me, i've tried but, but I'm sorry, who the hell is that? And what did they do? And why did they get $10,000 to hold up my new product? I just don't get it at all. And it's a terrible thing that it's now about how many followers does he have? Well, how many, how many followers does he have? I mean, you can't go to an audition today where the casting director doesn't ask first before they bring you in, how many followers does they have? Right. You freaking kidding me? Why are we forced to have to be, it's nice, you wanna have an app, you wanna join this club, you wanna, that's fine. But no, no, you have to. That's how we're gonna judge you from now on. You're not even gonna come in an audition and somebody's gonna go, yeah, you're right for the part, you're not. Somebody's saying, we don't wanna cast them if they don't have a lot of followers. Oh my God. So this is, this is a really rough planet right now mm -hmm. on people trying to get anywhere. You know, it was always difficult, you had your, talent and you're competing with other people who are very, very talented. That's hard enough. But this, no wonder you get stressed out about it, Raj, because it's not right. It's not fair. It's bull. It's just not right. We're going to end this portion of the conversation with Lucy Arnaz right here. And I want to reiterate what she said about her parents not being motivated by fame. Two of the most famous people in the world not motivated by the need to be famous. When we still ourselves, when we calm our minds, I believe we can find our true motivation again. I believe that the best motivation is always rooted in generous service. And so let's still our minds together with a breath exercise and find our generous motivation. So close your eyes, place your hand on your stomach to focus your breath. We're going to breathe in on five, out on five, three times. If you need to breathe out, do it now. And in, two, three, four, five. Out, two, three, four, five. In, two, three, four, five. Out, two, three, four, five. In, two, three, last time. Out, two, three, four, five. In this mental stillness, can you find your generous motivation again? Thank you for your time, and I will see you next week.